Good morning, good morning, Mount Hermon Missionary Baptist Church family and friends. It's your boy, Pastor Rod. Let's ask the Lord's blessing on our time this morning. Father God, thank you for another day, a day that was not promised to us, Lord, but a day that you saw fit, Lord, to breathe the breath of life in us one more time. Lord, we say thank you for all that you are, all that you do, Lord, just because you're God, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you look beyond our faults, met us at our needs. Lord, we need you right now, Master. Lord, we ask that you hide your preacher behind you, your cross, Heavenly Father. Let them see absolutely none of me, but let them see absolutely all of you. Lord, speak to me and through me, Lord, that we might be edified, but ultimately, Lord, that you would be glorified. It's all about you. It's not about us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, for a few moments this morning uh, from he Hebrews, Hebrews chapter number 13. Hebrews chapter number 13. Hebrews chapter number 13. When you find it, uh, meet me at verse number eight. Meet me at verse number eight. Meet me at verse number eight. Verse number eight. And it reads as thus, it says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. I want to speak for a few moments from this thought. I want to talk about a changeless God in an ever-changing time. A changeless God in an ever-changing time. Faith in God doesn't simply mean to have an, an area of your body or your mind somewhere that is sensitive to religion. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean that at all. No, no. You can find more carnal, unregenerated, self-centered folk who have religion and who are more sensitive toward it than you, than you can buried in the Grand Canyon somewhere. I mean, you can find plenty of men and women from all walks of life who live like the devil, but they are sensitive toward religion. If a evangelist or a great preacher sweeps through, the excitement will get so big, they'll go to the meeting, sell the crowd, give a dollar, and get a photograph, and the, the program would appear to be big. But here's the catch. After it's all over, the more standards of the community are right where they were before the revival ever started. I mean, I believe that, that whatever does not raise the moral standard of the church or the community has not been a revival from God at all. I mean, this kind of thing allows us to become altogether too chummy with God, as if we, as God is our best friend. You know what I'm we, we have so dragged God down to our level in place of a painstakingly trying to help him bring us up to his level. I mean, furthermore, making the God we believe in not the sovereign God who judges men, even among the fundamentalists, there are those who are squeamish about the doctrines of hell and judgment. Yes, they say we believe in God, but we don't think we ought to teach hell and judgment to the youth. Let me pause parenthetically and say right now, at, this is the reason. Because we don't teach hell and judgment to the youth. This is why right now, even in, in, in less than 16 days, less than three weeks into this new season or this new year, that there are more deaths right now than there was all of the last quarter of last year. You know why? Because we don't teach hell and judgment to the youth. And since we don't teach hell and judgment to the youth, they're out there causing hell and doing their own judgment. Preach it like you feel it. Yeah, 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 yeah. The God, the God, the God that men believe in now, the God to whom they are sensitive to is, is kind of like a divine Peter Pan with, with the pipe who plays lovely music while they dance, but he's not the God that makes moral demands on them. Mm, I still say that any revival that will come to a nation and lead people as much in love with money as they were before the is all falsehood and it's from the devil. Any revival, any revival that can come to a nation and leave men as worldly as they were before and as engrossed in human pleasure is a snare and a delusion. Faith in God, faith in God is not just, it's faith in God and not just any God, not in religion, but faith in the sovereign God who made heaven and earth, who judges among the gods, whose throne is justice and judgment, who will require men to be faithful and committed. That's the God that we must believe in. Oh, and when we believe in that kind of God, we will change our ways of living and we will change for the better. 
No, we will repent. We will repent and we will reform and turn to God. We will cease to do the evil and begin to do good and turn from our worldly ways. Preach this thing, Holy Ghost. Second Chronicles 7.14 is still right there. It says, if my people who are called by my name will lumber themselves, will, 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 will turn from their wicked ways. Huh? We, we, got, we got to first, we got to humble ourselves. We got to humble ourselves. We got to repent and turn from our wicked ways. And then the Bible say, and then, the conjunction, and then he will hear from heaven and heal the land. We want the pandemic to be over. We want it to be an endemic. You know what we need to do? We need to humble ourselves. We need to get more earnest in prayer. We need to repent and turn from our wicked ways. Then God huh, says he will heal from heaven. And he'll land. Mm. Talk this thing, Holy Ghost. Talk this thing again. So here's the question. Here's the question. Here's the question. I seen all those uh, 10 year challenges on Facebook. I even put one up myself. Uh, uh, the only thing that looked a lot different was with the great hairs in my face. But watch this. Watch this. Because the question is how much have you changed in the past 10 years? Do you look the same? Has your hair grayed a bit? Is it is it longer? Is it shorter? What about your facial features? Are there lines in your face where it once was smooth? Are there crow's feet at the corners of your eyes? What about your weight? Do you weigh more or less than you did 10 years ago? Are you are your ideas the same? Without what about your spirituality? Has it improved or has it worsened? I mean, if mirrors serve all any purpose at all, they let us know that we have some some sort of change. But however, mirrors cannot tell us whether we have changed spiritually. For that, we must hold our lives up to the word of God and see how it reflects to his word. Ah, there are many things in this, in this world that change. And sometimes things change so fast that we cannot get accustomed to all of the changes because they happen so fast. I mean, the rapid advancement of computers is a change that has taken many by storm. It seems that everyone is talking about computers as the wave of the future, all these apps and all these applications and all these softwares seem like it's the, the new way of the future. The prospects of change coming so fast that we cannot receive it properly is the basis of Alvin Toffler's book, which is called Future Shock. Yeah, in, it, in it, he details all the changes that are coming forth in our times. He projected that as we near the end of, of another century, they will come so fast that many people will be shocked by the rapidity and extent of the changes. Among those changes we be will be a need for a shorter, more intense experience. Yeah, he suggests that people will want to have the same intensity of experience in a shorter period of time. No longer will people sit and watch a nearly four-hour movie such as The Ten Commandments. Toffler also suggests that there will be a demand for responsibility. Temporary items will find a great place in the marketplace. Paper plates, plastic spoons, disposable napkins, tablecloth, and diapers. In addition, he, he adds that frightening aspect or frightening prospect that, that there will be also a yearning or disposability of relationships as divorce and separations become acceptable and become the norm. The scores of changes he, he, he details in his book point to the great truth that, that rapidly changes society. Many people will find themselves shocked and uncomfortable as they move from the industrial age into this informational age. Change, 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 especially change that occurs swiftly will also create a yearning for stability. The world will, will yearn for a place where, where its icons remain constant and its symbols remain untarnished by time. It will want something that does not change. And as Christians, we are satisfied that our God is able to provide us with peace of mind that rises above the changing times in which we live. Our assurance is based on our knowledge that changing times does not affect our God. Why? Because he is the same yesterday today and forevermore. Him and good times may change, but God stays the same. I got rewind in my mind. Let me tell you that one more time. Times may change. Things may change. Circumstances may change, but God remains the same. Let me hurry on to the text. This text em emphasizes the consistency of Christ while at the same time revealing the morality of men. The unknown writer of the Hebrews addressed the Jews on a, on a variety of subjects. Among them was the need to keep Christ as the center of their focus and not the religious leaders. Let me say that again. Come, come Lean in a little closer. 
He wanted Christ to remain at the center of your life, not the religious leaders. Christ at the center of your life, not the president of the government. Christ at the center of your life, not the pastors, the deacons. Christ at the center of your life. Mm, mm. He says among them keep Christ as the center of their focus and not the, the religious leaders. In verse 7, the accomplishment of great apostles, leaders, and teachers who had died were, were recalled. Many of these included men who had, who had seen Christ and had walked with him. They spoke with power and conviction because many of them were eyewitness to his words and his deeds. When they preached, thousands believed and turned to their faith. Their lives were models by which other believers could pattern themselves. They became icons of the Christian life as thousands emulated both their words and their faith. Watch this. Yet their numbers were rapidly declining. Both time and persecution had taken its toll. Watch this. Watch this. Most of the apostles were killed because of their belief. Other great teachers and preachers were either dead or incapacitated by time. The death of the giants of the faith discouraged some believers. Many had lost heart and were losing hope. The te this text finds the Hebrews being encouraged to look beyond the works of mere men, but to keep their faith on Christ. In just the brief words, in just brief words, the writer pays tribute to their memories, while at the same time pointing out that Christ, not the accomplishment or personality of men, is the center of faith. Ha. <sighs> ha. <sighs> yeah, yeah. He says, he says, he says, Christ is the center of faith. Because unlike men, Christ is immortal. Unlike me, mere men, Christ does not and will not change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. They were encouraged to keep the faith and not yield to the temptations to follow false teachings or false doctrine, but to keep Christ foremost in their mind. They were encouraged to remember that Christ as God is immortal and proven in Scripture. Psalms 10, I mean Psalms 102:27 says, But thou art the same. Thy years shall have no end. It speaks of the endless nature of God in his changeless character. Even his mercy is changeless. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. His mercy is changeless. It's as evidence in, in the 103rd number of Psalm, verse 17. It says, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto his children's children. Hallelujah. In Malachi chapter 3, I had to bring it back to the Old Testament again. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, God himself, God himself affirms his immutability, saying, For I am the Lord, and I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Ah, uh, the 90th number of song, verse 2 says, Before the mountains were brought forth, or even, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Come on, can help me preach this thing. The New Testament points out that there is no variability in God's nature. He is the same at all times. He is all constant. James 1, 17 puts it this way. Every good gift, <laughs> every perfect gift is from above and coming down from the Father of lights with whom is no variables, neither shadows of turning. With things changed, today there is very little importance placed upon anything. Let me just go on and say that right there. There's very little importance placed on anything right now. Ah, that, that which is traditional or customary is often rejected. Values and ideas are all considered variable, totally dependent upon the situation. But watch this. Everything changes, including the very substance that determines the quality of our lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I mean, you know, uh, uh, they come down with the new, or, 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 or they reinstituting the mask mandate for indoor events and uh, reinstituting the mask mandate for uh, companies with more than 100 employees. I mean, even now, I got to go back to wearing the mask at work all day, every day. And I don't know about you working 10 hours a day in a mask. I don't know about you, but yet I still have to do it because that's what is required. And so the qualities of living have changed, but God is still the same. God is still the same. Huh? Some, you know, we, you, 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 you still have to social distance and you do your best to stay away from large groups of people so you can keep yourself safe. But God is still the same. God is still the same. And I've been preaching this for almost two years now. And I don't think nobody's been listening. Uh, uh, he is the same God that you, that you have, that you worship at the sanctuary as he, he is the same God that you can still worship in your house. 
And the problem is, as I said two years ago, a lot of us was clamming to get to the sanctuary because we wasn't worshiping. We weren't doing no worship at home. Mm -hmm. Ah, the world believes in relative standards. Morality is considered relative as well. There are no absolutes according to the way of thinking. Each culture and every person is free to make its own rules. As each person makes his or her own rules, they change constantly. Ah, marriage is simply a piece of paper. The two parent family is obsolete. Till death do us part has turned until death to, to, till the death of us do part. Uh, to suggest even in certain Christian settings that there are certain immutable mutable laws of God that we transgress at our own peril and unfashionable at best and downright bigoted at worst. Those who have uh, adopted this attitude toward life argue that everything in life changes. The wagon was once our transportation. Now internal combustion engines harness our horsepower. The long walk to school with old syrup buckets for, for, for lunch pails was, was once a way of life, but now there are school buses and schools that serve breakfast, lunch, and afternoon snack. There was once a, an ice man that brought 25 blocks of ice and placed it in an ice box, but now electric refrigerators have taken their place. Once long trips across country required a family to fry boxes of chicken and lug in ice-filled pickle jars, but today there's K Kentucky Fried Chicken and McDonald's just about on every corner. We have witnessed many changes in today's time. In fact, we have watched things change so much that we have come to accept. We come to accept them as a part of life and it's part of our expectation. But God does not change. While there are many things that change in life, there's one certain truth. God does not change. Conditions change, but God does not change. Circumstance change, but God does not change. The fact that God does not change makes him the only true known entity in the universe. He can be depended upon never to waver or never to move because he is constant. While man is affected by time and age, God exceeds it and cannot be encompassed by time. Therefore, God does not age. He's timeless. And for that reason and that reason alone, it is true that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Because he is beyond measured by time because he's timeless. God's love for mankind is not affected by his mood. His love for us remains the same regardless to the mood of the moment. His love stays the same. Jesus, he best exemplifies this. Watch this. Because watch this. Judas was a striking example of betrayal and treason. Yet Jesus' love for him never ceased despite his disappointment in his actions. Ah, Peter was a striking example of faithfulness and cowardice, yet Jesus' love for him never diminished. Even while Peter was denying Christ, the master's love remained constant. Somebody should have taken a lap around, around your whole office or your whole house right there because you know God has brought you through so many dangers, toys and snares, yet his love for us has remained the same. Boy, I'm about to get up out of my seat right now because the treachery of the cross was painful and humiliating. Yet Jesus, even as he hung from the cross, remained constant in his love saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. God's love is not affected by sin. Uh, I know a story about a man's wife, um, a man whose wife cheats on him, often finds that his affection towards us has diminished. Yet God demonstrated to the world through the prophet Hosea and his marriage to the Harley Gomer that his love for us does not change and is not affected by our sin. The church folks just don't know when to shout, I tell you. Some of us was running a trap meet away from God and we ran laps around the church but never going into church. Yet God did not give up on us. We ran into the arms of drugs, alcohol, the bedroom or a motel room that did not belong to us. Yet God stayed right there waiting for us to come home. And although we sin, God develops a hate for the sin, but he never hates the sinner himself. Boy, you better preach this thing. Mm, consider the mother whose son was a mass murderer. The boy was, was unincorrigible. He stole and he murdered. He caused misery to everyone that was close to him. And as the day of his execution drew, drew near, the mother went to the chapel every day and prayed for him. 
Uh, a friend who who knew her well asked, how can you ask God to have mercy on your son uh -huh, who has killed and robbed so many? Hasn't what he has done angered you? The mother replied, watch this. My heart aches for the families that were wounded by my son's action. I'm hurt by his actions, but his action has not affected my love for him. Mm, come here, John 3.16. John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the love that will not change. God is still the same. And when we learn that God has changed us, the changing times in which we live will not affect us. You know why? They will not affect us because God is the same. There's no battle we can face that will stop us. Because God is the same, there's no mountain that will be too hard for us to climb. Because God is the same, there's no valley too deep for us to traverse. Because God is the same, there's no night too dark for us not to make it through. Because God is the same, there's no crisis that, will not that we cannot control. Because God is the same, there's no storm so strong that we cannot weather it. Because God is the same, there's no enemy so frightening that we cannot defeat. Because our God is the same. He's the same God that walked the face of the earth holding Enoch's hands. He's the same God that strode along with Abraham on the way to the promised land. He's the same God that who Jacob wrestled and held too close at the close of the night. He's the same God that down in the den with Daniel and sealed the lion's jaws up so tight. He's the same God that rolled back the waters of the deep sea so that the children of Israel can walk on dry land. God is alive today and he can save you and me. Ezekiel described him as a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Job described him as a horse. He was Daniel's snow. He was Ezekiel's leader. And the old saints used to say he's a rock in a weary land. He's a shelter in the time of storm. And I don't know about you, but I call him savior. Because one dark Friday, he died on an old rugged cross. But I'm so glad that he didn't stay there. Because I heard the old folks say early. They used to say early, Sunday morning, he got up with all power, all power in his hands. That same God can get in your life and make it meaningful and real. He's real. He's real. I know he's real. Thank God that all doubt is settled because I know he's real. He's the same God that Big Mama used to talk about. He's the same God that granddaddy used to talk about. He's the same God that my daddy talks about. He's the same God that my mama talks about. And he's the same God all these years later that I'm talking about. 54 years. Happy birthday, Roderick. 54 years. He's the same God from when I was one in 1968. He's the same God. Here I am, January 16th. 2022, he's the same God. Boy, I, ooh, I wish I had somebody that know God is the same God. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yes, Lord. Mm. Mm -mm. Ooh. <laughs> he's the same God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God bless you today. God bless you today. God bless you today. Woo. God bless you. Uh, let's just, let's say a prayer for Brother Marshall. Brother Marshall, God bless you, sir. Thank you for your encouraging message uh, this morning. Um, let's pray for Brother Marshall. Sister Heidelberg, let's pray for Sister Heidelberg and her family. Let's pray for Deacon Ward and the Ward Northern family. I love all you guys. I miss y'all. Let's pray for Mom and Pop Base. They're doing well. They're doing well. They're minding their own business, staying in their own place. They, they're healing. They're recovering. They, they're doing good. They're doing good by the grace of God. By the grace of God. God bless you. I love y'all, Sister Betty Pendleton. Shouts out to you, Sister Betty. Love you. Thank you for continuing to support the church and the ministry. Thank all you that continue to support the church and the ministry. Sister Paulette Washington, to you and Mother Davenport, God bless you. We're praying for you. 
It was wonderful to hear the news that she's doing good. God bless y'all. I miss y'all. Uh, pray for me. Yes, the Lord has allowed me to see 54 years. And all I can say is that by the grace of God, it's nothing I've done. Nothing I've done. I ain't no superhuman. God is just good. So God bless you. I love y'all. I miss y'all. Pray for me. As I pray for you, let's watch God change things. It's your boy, Pastor Bates. I'm out.